Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Playdates and Travels. If you are new to my channel, I welcome you. We do a lot of Disney and Harry Potter content on this channel. And today I'm actually going to be doing something that is certainly related to both Disney and Harry Potter at the same time, which is kind of awesome. So hence my Harry Potter look. I'm wearing a Marauder's Map shirt and Harry Potter Butterbeer ears. And today is going to be a very fun collaboration that I'm doing along with other channels on YouTube as well who focus on Disney content. And our videos are going to be pin collections. And this is the Celebrating People, Places, and Collections um, collaboration. I probably say that wrong every single time because I always forget to look at what it ac is actually called. But at any rate, it's the CCC, CCPP collab, right? Um, and this month's theme is the British Invasion. So I've done this for many months per throughout this entire year. I actually have really been enjoying showcasing some of my lesser known pin collections. And it just so happens that a lot of my side collections fall into the um, the British Invasion topic. So this is going to be a lot of our British pins, more of the obvious choices like 101 Dalmatians, which take place in London. And then we also have some options that might be like loosely related. For example, I'm going to use um, Jock, the Scottish <laughs> Terrier uh, from Lady and the Tramp because he is a Scottish character. So hence he's going to be included in this as well. But I wanted to include just a couple of things on the side as well. I know that some, we had a little debate going on with the people who are involved in this collab, whether we should include British Commonwealths or not, and everyone's going to just do their own thing. But the organizer of this swap is Valerie from Singer Family Adventures. She's pretty fun. If you haven't already watched her, watched or started following her channel, please go ahead and do so now. Um, and she has come up with this great idea of showcasing our pin collections every month. And she actually said it was okay to include Jungle Book because Jungle Book obviously is India. At any rate, so British owned or British Commonwealth or British related is kind of what you can go with this, the British invasion. I guess that technically includes Australia as well. So you could just do whatever you wanted, right? But I'm going to just show most of my pins, not all, because I do have some in uh, boxes, but this is actually the first thing I've been filming since my daughter and my son have both been sick this past couple of weeks. Um, this is actually week two of dealing with different viruses, not COVID, thankfully, but, um, you know, other viruses, respiratory viruses are just as annoying sometimes, um, especially when they just don't go away and they evolve into something else. So I have two sick children at home as I'm filming. That hence, I was going to show you guys this differently for once and show you the film, um, the pic, the, ugh. I was going to show you the pins in front of me with myself on camera, but because I just, this is frazzle mom mode, I just brushed my hair for the first time in days, guys. I'm just going to flip the camera around and show you my pins. Hopefully that's okay, but let's get into my side collection, Sword in the Stone, 101 Dalmatians. Um, I can finally show you all my Madame Man pins as well, which is a lot of fun for me. Um, and we're going to keep on going from there. So let's get into it. Plus Harry Potter. So excited to show you my Harry Potter collection finally in one video. So if you like seeing pins and this type of video, please consider subscribing now and let's get into it. So I'm going to start with my PTD collection. These are Pinter Delights from the Disney Studios store in Hollywood. Some of my favorite pins ever. And I do have this trio right here of Madame Mim as a cat, Madame Mim as a dragon, and Madame Mim as a snake. This is all from the Disney Studios store in Hollywood. I absolutely love these pins because they feature different characters holding up ice cream, which is my favorite snack in all the world. And just to give you a sense, this is a close-up of Mim as a cat. I got the purple hair and you can see her whiskers and just looking that so concentrated. And this one is an LE size of 500. Oh wow, this is actually a bigger um, LE pin than normal. They usually are a lot smaller than that. But let's see the dragon, for example. Mim as a dragon is 300. So yeah, it just really depends on the actual pin. But that is her again. And then close above the snake. Um, and then below them, I do have a 100 mall Dalmatians pin. This is actually my very first ever PTD. No, not Ellie. <laughs> but I do have, she's from Up, but she's not British. But it, Sergeant Tibbs is actually the cat from 100 mall Dalmatians. Um, toward the end of the film and uh, that was actually my very first PTD. I really love this life-size Sunday next to him So because of that I am going to show you that as well because that is a British themed movie The majority of my great mouse detective pins are over here And this is one of my favorite films from the 80s and it's kind of funny because it's a lesser known film And I never really have a chance to show you these pins So I was really excited to get a chance to show you that um, as part of this collaboration But you can see this is the great mouse detective marquee pin um, also from the Disney Studio store in Hollywood, it does have the El Capitan signage right there. I love that it's sorry, my lighting is really 
dim right now. I hope this is coming out okay. But it, I do like that he has got his signature hat. This is like a Sherlock Holmes type of character. And most of these marquee films, um, these marquee pins always have the marquee. It's like the signage that you would see at the theater. And this is the official Disney theater in Hollywood. So that's why it says El Capitan, which is no, le located next door to the Disney Studios store Hollywood. And you can see this is an LE size of three. Hundred. Located next to the marquee pin, I do have Dawson. It does have Dr. David Dawson <laughs> dressed as a part. This one they're in disguise. And then you have um, Basil. Basil of Baker Street is the character's name. Um, that's the Sherlock Holmes character. And they are in disguise um, because they're trying to find out what happened to Olivia Flaversham's father. So that is them in the bar and they look very very scandalous and you can see that Dawson is a little bit drunk <laughs> he's definitely like just had a little too many but um this is an Ellie size of 1000 part of the Disney disguises series the original one that came out and I'm super grateful for this pin this was gifted to me by my friend Karen at Karen's USA, USA Adventures because she did get this one and knew that I wanted it um next to that we do have a PTD Sunday and this is of Dr. Dawson, once again, you can see him with the ice cream. I did get this one um, secondhand from a live sale, I believe, um, but I was excited to add this to my collection, and this is an LE size of 300. That's to go along with this one that I have of, this is actually Olivia's father, Flaversham, and you can see this big, beautiful hot fudge sundae next to him with the big spoon. Love all these PTD pins, and this one was an LE of, where's that LE size? Ooh, 200. Only 200 of these babies made. Then I have the PTD version of Olivia, and she is just the cutest, so I really love these pins. I was determined to get all of these different PTD pins of them because I think they're just so adorable, and she looks so, so cute here. I do have the Funko version of her as well, but I just love her pose, how proper she is and she's a beautiful character and then i have one of these um open edition pins um these are from the disney uh it's like a disney pack that's been around for a while and i do have the one of basil with his little magnifying glass next to that is a great mouse detective pin that was gifted to me from um geeking out with melly mel we did this uh, pin collaboration and she focus 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 there we go she was determined to get me a great mouse detective pin i didn't already own and I love it. It's like the little, like, uh, you know, I always forget what it's called, but the metallic um, innards of a clock <laughs> toward the end of that movie. That's where the scene is from. And I love that. It's like a little corkscrew. I don't know what those are called. But it says the 1986 Great Mouse Detective, because that is the year it came out. And it's part of that whole series of, fil of pins from the Disney store that tell you the year they came out. Love that. Um, below that, I do have a pin trading night um, pin. And this is a one from Great Mouse Detective. I had to get this when this was released. Um, I think I did it through a pickup. I forget who picked it up for me, but a fellow YouTuber um, friend. This might have been um, Disney Sisters, actually. But you can see Toby in the background, the beautiful dog, and then Basil. And they are searching. And you can see he's using his nose to sniff things out. So love that. Love the scenes of London, the streets of London, depicted behind them as well. That takes me to my little small 101 Dalmatian section over here. I do have the pups. This is, I think, a either Hot Topic or Box Lunch lounge fly pin. This is a Disney lounge fly pin from Box, Box Lunch. And you can see that it has a telephone booth behind Pongo and Perdita. Love that. Oh my gosh, he looks so much fun. Rolly is so much fun. <laughs> He's like just, just fed and he's sitting in a dog bowl. Um, and then you have another open edition pin from the Disney parks, similar to this one from one of those packs. And I have the two... Uh, Two lovers there as well. I have this 101 Dalmatians. This is the vinyl collection, I believe. Yeah, because it comes out like that with a little um, vinyl record, as if it was a record player. 101 Dalmatians, side one. So those are a fun pin series. It was a limited edition from the parks of 3000. And then up here, impeding upon my Dumbo section, I do have this one um, ice cream cone pin of the Dalmatians as well. And then I have a couple of Robin Hood pins. Um, this one is Robin Hood and he's doing archery from the parks. When this came out, I was like, I need this so much because archery is a big part of my life. If you guys don't know the story already, it's actually how my husband and I met. We met playing archery because we both were fans of Robin Hood, I think. So that's actually kind of cool. And I love this pin, LE 4000. It is pin on pin, so nice and 3D. I've got this little fantasy version of, little fantasy version of Sir Hiss above him. So that is kind of cool. 
having a major problem with the focusing today. There we go. And due to lighting, I'm just going to move over here. This is the Robin Hood pin, 45th anniversary, also from the Disney parks. I do love that it's another pin on pin um, that came out. You can see Maid Mary in the background, a couple of the other characters. So I really like that you can see different characters incorporated in here, and it's nice and like etched in. So that's a fun, different effect. And this was an Ellie of only 2000, so that's exciting. Um, then I have this pin. It's another 45th anniversary from the parks, Disney Robin Hood. And you can see with this one, this one actually features a swinging Robin Hood and Maid Marian. They do swing from side to side at the very top of this. So when they swing this way, there's Sir Hiss there. Um, it blocks Sir Hiss, and you can see Prince John. He's like, oh! So I love that. This is one of my favorite movies from my childhood. Always a fun, fun movie and definitely appropriate to include in the British Invasion. Ellie size of 2000. And the final pin for this collection right here. I just had another box lunch pin of the Lovers. These always come out on Valentine's Day and I love it. It's got the little archery um, arrow between the heart. I've been promising to show my Sword and Stone pin, so here you go. There is Madame Mim. This is a D23 pin that I got. Beloved Dark Tales. Dark Tales. Um, you can see it's a Disney Studio Store pin. Limited edition of 300 I was super excited to get this from that event a couple years ago. So definitely one of my most prized pins. I love Madame M so much in that she's just like, ah! <laughs> she's like one of my favorite villains ever. Um, then I have the marquee pin from Disney Studios store. You can see um, Wart is pulling out the sword and there's Merlin on that side doing a, a spell as well. Love them. I have the duo of Merlin and the sword and the stone. That is part of the, it's a small fantasy land pin set that came out. I have this 55th anniversary pendant from the parks, and you can see it does have Wart holding up the sword with a bunch of sparkles, and then there's Merlin looking on, and the owl, so Archimedes. I love that all this is in, you know, nice pin form. It's a beautiful pin, and it's really well done. This was a limited edition of 2000 from the parks, and look at that pin on pin. I have one of the Kingdom Cute pins, and this is the sword in the stone. Love that. I have one of the open edition pins of Merlin. Fun, fun, fun. I also have... Um, open edition pin of Mim. Took me a while to get that, but I finally did. And I think I actually have two of those now. I forgot that I had traded for that twice. Um, this is from the, uh, the series that came out a couple years ago and they were all different colors. And I do have Mim in this particular section because I absolutely love the pin of Mim. The rest of the pins are somewhere. I don't actually know where those are. Uh, I do have this one. This is from the ink and paint boxes, but I love the one of Merlin. I was so excited when I got this one. There is him doing a spell. Uh, next to that, I do have one of the shield pins, and this is the one of Mim as a dragon. I do have two of these as well, so I think I actually have the other one for trade, unless I got rid of her already. I'm not sure. Um, over here, I have one of those spinner pins. This is actually a cast exclusive, I believe. Am I making that up? Nope, it does say cast exclusive. It's hard to read that right now. I absolutely love that it's worn the stone with Mim versus Merlin, and then around them is a spinner wheel, wheel, and you can see them in different forms. So there's Merlin as a walrus, for example. There's Mim as a dragon again, snake. There's her as a alligator, him as a squirrel, etc. I just love that you get all those iterations. It's a fun and festive pin, and can't ask for anything better. I love pins that move. <laughs> And I love Mim when she's showing attitude. And I have this Sword in the Stone pin. This is from the Millennium pin collection from the Disney store. I showed you the one from Great Mouse Detective. I also have this one. Love these pins. 1963. Beautiful, beautiful pin. Then I have a fantasy pin of Madame Mim right here. She looks very fun. Um, the creator of this, I don't know, but it was an LE50. I have a couple of these, including one of Vanessa from Little Mermaid. I have an open edition pin. Um, this was a Hidden Mickey of Mim as a dragon. Also fun. She's pulling her hair, looking disgruntled. I have another one of the ones from that colorful set. I'm, the name is blanking me right now, but you can see Merlin right here in blue. This is an open edition pin of Mim from the parks. You can see that she does have a broom in her hand. Always fun. This is my only cutie pin. I would like to have more, but they're super expensive and hard to find. This was a surprise release from the Disney Studio Store Hollywood. I was lucky to get this, and one day I will own the cuties of Ariel and Eric as well, but that's a different story. Anyway, I love how mischievous she looks right here, and this was an Ellie size of 200? 500? 500. 
Always hard to read those. And I have this Ears of Excellence pin. I think I got this from a live sale. I just saw it, saw that it had Mickey Mouse and Merlin, and I said sold. Didn't even care about the price. It's not focusing. But there you go. Merlin and Ears of Excellence. That's my open edition pin of Mim and my Mulan collections down there. And then finally, I also have this movie poster one. This is from the movie poster series in the Disney Store. Whiz bang, Wizard of, Whim Wizard of Whimsy. Walt Disney Store in the Stone looks just like the original poster. I love the artwork on this. So much fun. Lots of different stuff going on. There's Merlin breaking out in like spots. So much fun. So definitely love the movie poster series and so glad I got this one. Finally, I do have this one as well. I believe I traded with my friend. It was either my friend Gina or um, Becca, Disney Kitty. I can't remember which one I got this from at this point, but I love that I was able to find this one finally. It's part of the Park Pack series and this is Mim, again with the spots as a dragon. And I love that she's just breaking out. So I had to have this pin and I'm very grateful to either one of those ladies for trading this with me. Super fun. And I kind of glazed over this one earlier, but this is my largest pin I own in my entire collection. Aside from that um, <laughs> Little Mermaid frame set, but this I got from the Medieval Magic series. You can see it's LE size 500 from the Disney Parks. The price was $75. I know, crazy, crazy. But look how big this is. It is Mort reaching for the sword in the stone. Such an iconic moment. You can see how this is just etched out on this like blue glossy blue background it's got like little like fleur-de-lis designs in the back as well looking very royal and the best part is that the actual sword moves up and down so let's give it a shot <gasps> oh my gosh you can put it in his reach and then you can also just slide it on back down so i love that this is a movable element definitely a unique pin and i just love big pins so I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to put this on a pin board because this is just a heavy, heavy little regal pin. But in the box, it shall stay for now. One of my favorite pins for sure. I just don't know where to put it. <laughs> but there you go. Sword in the Stone at its best. Whoa, what? Whoa! So we'll start with our overview of all of my Harry Potter pins. I don't have that many. I know it fills up this entire board, so it looks like it's a lot. But the backer cards take up a lot of space. So let's go one by one. Starting over here. I have here the pins that I gathered from seeing Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on Broadway, um, parts one and two. This is actually from the New York show. I have not seen it in San Francisco or London or anywhere else that it's playing. I've only seen part one in New York, and um, that was my last trip before the pandemic and been the end of 2018. And I would hope to see part two, but then the world kind of changed, so... I still haven't seen part two on stage, but part one was absolutely amazing. This one is the Ravenclaw. You can see that the logo of the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is slightly different from how we are used to seeing it from the Harry Potter films, which kind of shows how the houses have evolved in time. So this is the Ravenclaw. You can see a little bit of feathers at the very top, and this is a pin symbolizing that house. Um, I did a faux pas. I grabbed Slytherin, Gryffindor, and Ravenclaw and did not grab a Hufflepuff because, sorry guys, two Hufflepuffs, so that's my least favorite house. So I grabbed three out of the four. I just got cheap, but I'll show you the rest of them as we go along. That's a close-up of the Gryffindor one. You can see this one has the Gryffindor line at the very top of the G and his mane at the very tip as well. So that's kind of cool to see all that depicted. This is my house with the one I represent with most, so I do like that. And apparently you can find these products also at thecursedchildstore.com. And then finally, this one is the Slytherin one. I am not a Slytherin, but I happen to like love sinister looking things. So Slytherin with the S and the snake kind of like appeals to me and I really like the way that this design is as well. So those are the three houses I have. Again, I do not have Hufflepuff, but they do sell that as well if you are a Hufflepuff. Moving over here, this is the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child official pin. So besides the house ones, they also had this one um, replica emblem. I also have the buttons as well, but I do like that this has like the logo from the show and I had to get this pin. Kind of like a dark and sinister look to it, right? That's what you see when you go to New York, so it's pretty awesome if you ever have a chance to go see that. Over here I have a Hogwarts symbol pin. I got this from Typos. Lots of fun. This is from a mystery set that I got from Hot Topic once upon a time. It's just like a skull on top of a snake, so definitely like a 
Deaf Eater type of symbol from Loungefly. This is a platform nine and three quarters pin that I also got from, I believe I want to say Typo as well. It's an Australian store, but I happen to love and it has Harry Potter on it. I like the simplicity of that. I have this Harry Potter chibi pin, which I got from um, online, I believe Box Lunch or Hot Topic. I love that it has his scar and he looks very dapper, like he's been to the old ball, it's very fun. Below that, I have this Have You Seen This Wizard pin. This is also a lounge fly. You can see that he kind of moves into his scary pose there. <laughs> As Kabam with his number. Or here, he's just nice and calm. So I love seeing Sirius Black kind of all crazy. It's definitely a nice, fun um, moment from the film. And it's just a, I believe it just says WB on the back. Um, this actually was my favorite book, book three, where Sirius Black takes, um, takes shape until I went to books four and five. Those became my favorites later on, but I did really like this book originally. This is a fantasy pin that says Granger. I believe I got this in, I want to say a Bibbidi box. Someone sent this to me. Um, I think it was a, a, a subscription box, but it does say Granger. I don't know who made this, but you can see it has the paw, the potion, crown, and it says Animagus Co. is the maker of this pin. So pretty nice. And I love the glitter. A nice Hermione pin. Um, below that, I have another fantasy pin. This is a more recent addition to my collection. It is a toilet. <laughs> and um, when you open it up, it has the Ministry of Magic symbol with an arrow because this is where you will flush yourself down the toilet to enter the Ministry of Magic. And you can see it's like a swirling toilet fluid. Um, very interesting uh, fantasy pin that was created for the Akio box, um, I believe in March or so, and I did get that box. So that is their logo on the back of this. Pretty cool. And over here I have my two um, Wizarding World of Harry Potter official pins from Universal Studios. You can see this says Wanted, Nocturne Alley, and this is just a replica of what it looks like in the park. So you have Bergen and Burke, and over here's a Wanted poster. It says Bellatrix Lestrange. So Lots of evil brewing in this particular portrait. I love the colors and the purples and the blues. And it just looks lots and lots of fun. And um, definitely love this pin. And then over here is the Hogwarts castle. I couldn't leave the parks without getting this because I'm such a castle person in general. So I love this replica of the rock and the actual building itself. So pretty cool. Further down, I have a lot of my lounge fly pins that I have gathered. So this one is a Funko um, four pin set, an enamel pin set that... At one point it was discounted down from 25 to 10 and then it went off sale, but I bought this, I think for 15, I made a compromise. Um, but I love that it has Harry Potter's little chibi form there with a scarf. Then over here you have the Gryffindor logo, very nice with the lion. You have a, a golden snitch. And then you also have Harry Potter's glasses with the lightning bolt. So four separate pins. You can see I have not taken this out of its original backing because I like that it has like the newspaper print behind it, but lots and lots of fun. Then I have this Gryffindor pin. I am a Gryffindor once again. So when I saw this, I had to go and get this. And I hadn't actually seen this pin before, but I saw this in the Funko store in Hollywood and it has the little Hogwarts logo down there, the emblem on this nice little, you know, banner. Edwig carrying the post. I always love the owl post and I'm a big fan of snowy owls and Hedwig in general. So I had to grab this pin as well. Here is the Amortentia um, Love Potion one. Um, I do have another version of this pin it's not on this board, oddly enough. Hmm. But I do have another one that's just like this. It's smaller. And that is another Harry Potter pen um, that came from Loungefly and was sold at Box Lunch. But this one I got from Typo. It's a little bit bigger. So that's why I like it, to have the compare and contrast. But same idea of the love potion. Then we have the Wingardium Leviosa, my favorite, one of my favorite spells. And it has the feather. So this is a two-pin set that was released from Loungefly. Had to grab that as well. Wingardium Leviosa. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa, right, Hermione? Um, and then I have here my two Funko Pop pins. Um, they were mysteries, we didn't know what you were gonna get. So I did get the Hermione one sent to me, which I usually have on display. And I have her with, with the wizard wand and her little crest right there looking oh so dapper. And you see at the back, it is in pin form or it has a stand. So you could just have her up standing on display and that works too. And then I haven't had the heart to take Dumbledore out of his box yet, but this is the same thing. I'm such a big Albus Dumbledore fan. This is him in his like winter clothes. So I had to get this um, in pure form. You can see his spectacles there too. I love Dumbledore so much. So 
how to go and get that and keep him preserved in his box. And finally, this is my last Harry Potter pin that I have here to show you today. And this is one of my newer pins. It is a hinge pin. You can see that I have never opened it because it's still sealed. But this is Hogwarts Castle and it's a hinge pin. So it's opened up. And let's go ahead and open that together. And look, there's Hedwig, the snowy owl at the very top. Just going to remove that. And you can see the nice night starry sky behind it. There's another close-up of Hedwig and the beautiful castle. And if I open it up, let's see what's on the inside. It's been a while since I looked at the pin online. Oh, fun. So it's got all four house colors and banners. And then it says, and then you can see that it has Hermione, Harry, Ron, and of course, Dumbledore. Very, very cool. Love that. Finish, finish off my Harry Potter collection. This is my unopened um, stash, but this is a Ron Weasley pin. That I also got. Um, you can see it says Wizarding World, so it's Ron in his robes and his scarf. Pretty awesome pin holding the wand, so I wanted to get that from Launchfly as well. And then I recently picked up all of these mystery boxes. I believe I have four of this one. So one, two, three, and four. There we go. So it has the characters on the back, so you can see there's Professor, Professor McGonagall, Dumbledore, and these are all the characters, by the way, and their Patronuses, which is kind of awesome. So that's hers, that's his, etc. There's Snape with the dough, always my favorite. Hermione, her, <laughs> um, Ron, and then finally you have Harry, and Harry's got his stag. So he's the chaser. I do have four of these. I have not opened this, so I can't tell you which ones I have from this selection yet. There'll be a future video more reason to come back to who play decent travels right guys to see what pins i have i apologize i just haven't had a chance to open these yet i have a lot of mail i've been sitting on and then i have two other boxes and this will also be featured eventually but this is also the same kind of box but this one contains one of the special creatures so i did like that this had like the creatures um from the harry potter world it does say that there are there are chibi blind pins and there are 24 e pin 24 they all say 24. This is six pieces. So I'm not really understanding what the significance of 24. Maybe there are more than what's shown on this box because this is only showing me 12. So are there double what you see here? Interesting. It says collect all 12 pins. So really not sure what that 24 number is there. Okay, so there are 12. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And you can see all the different options. So that's pretty awesome that you can have like a unicorn a dragon, a three-headed dog, so much fun. You can have the monster, book of monsters, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You can have fox even. <laughs> so pretty cool, snowy owl on the bottom. You even have um, like buck beak on the bottom as well. So that is pretty cool. I'll have to open this up eventually and see which ones I get. So those are all my mystery Harry Potter pins. I have yet to open. Stay tuned for a future video on that. Speaking of mystery boxes, I also have this Winnie the Pooh box, just one. I haven't opened it, but these in from the parks and they include two chaser pins. So since Winnie the Pooh is from, you know, the world of England as well. And that's what the front of the box look like for reference, character connection. I have an extra one of this um, Madame Mim as a snake pin. It's a PTD that I also got from the Disney store, studio store. And I decided to grab an extra just to have on hand. I love that she is like breathing ice cream <laughs> and then my last ptd pin that i wanted to show you for you is a great mouse detective pin and this is felicia the cat i know this is my friend melody's like favorite cat ever and you can see that she's just like slightly fondling this ice cream so pretty fun pin overall going back to the world of sword and the stone this is one of my newer pins that i got um from the new family pin collection my friend kelly picked this up for me but you can see it has Mim as a dragon, one of my favorite forms of her, and then you have Merlin as a goat, but then you also have them in different iterations, like there's Merlin as the fish, and then little um, Wart as a fish as well. This is both of them as squirrels, and this is Wart trying to reach for the, for the sword as a squirrel that doesn't happen in the movie. Spoiler alert! And then this is them as birds. So I love that you have, and the owl, I love that you have all these different iterations. You've got the banners, you've got this beautiful stonework in the background, and the sparkles. Such a fun, colorful, creative pin. And then also from the parks, I have this 65 Years of Magic Disneyland Resort King Arthur Carousel pin. 
And the reason I'm showing it to you because there is wart on the side right there. And it does say Disneyland 65 in this beautiful, like, light pink uh, color. I do have this Visit Neverland pin. This is newer from the parks. It's part of that Disney Dream Destinations collection they've been going out with. And you can see there's Tinkerbell in the distance. There's a Jolly Roger. There's even this little uh, wheel to show that they're navigating. So pretty cool pin if you are a Peter Pan fan. This is actually one of my traders slash I might offer this up for sale, but definitely um, we'll have this up for trade. I have this Disneyland 65 pin of Mr. Toad. That's a big icon that you can see at Disneyland only. It's not in Disney World, but this is another British um, tale. So that's why it's part of this collection. This is a pass holder pin. So it says to all who come to this happy place. So kind of hard to see that this on camera right now. But it says welcome and it has an emblem of the monorail and also the small world clock. So awesome limited release pin with Mr. Toad on it. So I had to show that as part of this collection. This is my other Mr. Toad <laughs> Wild Ride-esque um, pin that I have. It does say Mr. Toad's Wild Ride on the top and 60th anniversary. And you can see it's kind of like the fireplace scene, which is what you would see in the actual ride. Um, this pin is broken. The hinge is broken. So I have to like hold it carefully because the doors do come off. But when I open the door, you can see a nice fun surprise. It's not Mr. Toad, but a mashup. There's Daisy and Donald. <laughs> so I love that it's Donald and Daisy staring back at you, but Daisy's like looking maniacal as she's driving the car. So pretty awesome little addition there to this Mr. Toad's pin. And this is my one Australian edition I am going to show you. This is Rascars Down Under pin. And because I did really like this movie when I was little, it takes place in Australia and you can see Jake um, and he's in the background in the cage. And then there's the iguana, Joanna. I love that. So I had to show that as well. Then to wrap this up, I have a couple more uh, British pins, including there is my Corella de Ville um, collection right on top. Most of them are open edition pins. I have Alice Wonderland, Queen of Hearts. I have another Corella de Ville um, coat right there from the Dresses series. I have a Drink Me pin from Box Lunch, um, Lounge Fly, excuse me. One of the um, nesting doll dresses of Alice, as well as the Cheshire Cat there. That's from the Disney Parks. Both of those are. Um, that is a Lounge Fly pin, below that of Cheshire Cat. This one right here of the rabbit is actually from the Jared Mariama pin. So this is limited release, uh, but this was also released at the parks and I got two of this. So this one actually is for trade. Um, my other one I've already parted ways with. Uh, over here I have Captain Hook. That's a lounge fly pin. I have a, another pin from the Ink and Paint series and that is of Tinkerbell. I have this open edition pin from one of the mystery packs of, uh, actually I think that might have been the Best Friends uh, series or so of Peter Pan and Tink. I have these two pins from an open edition four pack and it's Jolly Roger and a teddy bear, also from Peter Pan. And then I have this um, bottle cap Hidden Mickey pin of Tink that I got from those little mystery packs. I have over here a pin that says from the telephone series of, you can see Roger on the phone getting the news about the, the babies. And then you have Pongo looking on, uh, you know, a little bit, a little concerned. Of course, it's about the babies that are pups, um, not human babies. And then you also have a Windows of Magic pin here. And it's the one of my favorite ones of the 101 Dalmatians. So you can see Pongo, his pups, and Roger. Uh, this is a newer lounge fly pin. It has one of the puppies holding the uh, little article. that says, Fashion by Corella. <sighs> then I have another Ink and Paint series pin of... Uh, actually, this is one of those like duo pins that came out from Lounge Fly, I think. I'm forgetting. I think it's with Ink and Paint one, though. And it's Pongo and Perdita. Um, and that is all my Dalmatian ones. Last two editions, I had the 60th anniversary Dalmatian pin. I thought I had the other one from the Disney store. Disney Parks, excuse me, around the piano. I might have gotten rid of them that now. So, 101 Dalmatians. I'll have to look for the other pin eventually. But this is what I'm going to show you. I have it still in the bag because that's how it came from Shop Disney. Over here, I have some more Alice pins, including Tweedledum, Tweedledee, and a teacup. That's a Kassenberg exclusive. This one's a happy end birthday pin from Box Lunch. This is a caterpillar, also from the Kassenberg exclusive. So those are all, I'm not Kassenberg, this was like the Fantasyland, Alice in Wonderland boxes that came out. This is a Cheshire Cat hot air balloon that I still have. And I think that is all my Alice pins now. I can move on. I have a couple of Jock, the Scottish Terrier from Lay and the Tramp. And since he is Scottish, I wanted to include him in my British Invasion. So you can see him there. You can see him here. I also have a brand new pin part of this new best friend series from the Disney store. You can see it has Trusty and then there is Jock as well. So I wanted to include that as well because he is part of the British invasion, I think. 
Um, and then going further, I have uh, Prince John from Robin Hood. I have Merida's Castle um, from the Castle series from Brave. I have um, him again. This is a lounge fly pin that I was given um, from a Mickey loot box. I have uh, Ka from Jungle Book and then uh, Shere Khan. I just included them just because they're villains and they're from Jungle Book, so why not? Um, I have one more extra Great Mouse Detective pin over here. This is from Disguises uh, as well, and it's Radigan. I don't know what he's dressed up as, a clown. <laughs> then I have this one pin of Great Mouse Detective. It is a fidget pin. He does move. And this is a Disneyland 2020 pin that was released for Bat Day. I have this one of Marie on the big lounge chairs from Loungefly. I love the big oversized, excuse me, the big oversized chairs. And the fact that Marie is sleeping, that one will be up for trade. And then I also have this Aristocats pin, the only one I have from that whole Character Connection series, so it's up for trade. And then I have Mrs. Potts on here because Angela Lansbury is British, so I decided, why not? Let's put her on here, too. Phew! And that is all my pins. woo -hoo -hoo. Thanks, guys, for watching. And this last pin is another 65 Years of Magic pin from Mad Tea Party, showing that part of that ride. And you can also see the Mad Hatter on the side, is Disneyland 65. It's in this blue, sparkly font. I think she just fell off my board. But I also have this Marie pin from Disney Studio Store Hollywood. This was released around Valentine's Day. You can see her playing with the yarn of heart, the heart of yarn, I should say. And, and she's got the yarn in her mouth. So cute. This is actually up for trade or sale. So I wanted to pull that out of that as well. But I do have this Marie pin, limited edition, small size. And so excited that I was able to get this one and a couple others earlier this year. Okay, guys, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all my pins. Again, that was not all of them. I do have some scrolled away in different like boxes and whatnot, but that was a majority of my side collections. Hope that was enjoyable to you. And again, please go ahead and watch all the other channels participating. I'm not the only video that is uploading today. So there's gonna be a lot of other fun pin collections to see. Some people mentioned they had bed knobs and broomsticks pins, which I'm super excited to go and watch because that's one of my favorite films from my childhood. Um, I know I was not born in the seventies guys. I just, is one of the older films that I enjoyed watching. And I do like Angela Lansbury, and that's why I included her in my video today, because she's British, even though, you know, uh, Belle and Beauty and the Beast takes place in France, technically. We could also have the British character, because it's voiced by a British actress. That was my loose uh, interpretation of that. Anyway, British invasion, guys, right? The British are coming. The British are coming. Okay, <laughs> that's it for me today. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and I will talk to you guys soon in the next one, hopefully very, very soon. I do have a video where I'm going to showcase more of a lifestyle type of content. I was hoping to get that the day before this video would pop out, but I've just been very slow moving in the editing process because my kids have been sick. So I'm hoping to get that later up this week. I also have two different collabs besides this one coming up this week. So you're going to want to stick around. I have a lot of film content to come up on this channel very, very shortly. So please consider sticking around. Stick around for some more Disney content as well. And I do have Harry Potter content coming September 1st. Keep that in your minds. Okay, that's it for me today. Talk soon. Bye. Big, big.